Oh, yes, yeah, stocks cut their earlier losses as financials pull ahead. After all this morning's fear over Greece, the market focus now switches to the results of today's three-year bond auction at the top of the hour and what could be revealed in this afternoon's release of the Fed Minutes. I'm Simon Hobbs, in for Melissa Lee. The Fast Money Halftime crew liquidator Joe Terranova, John Nigerian of OptionMonster.com, Eugene Profit of uh, Profit Investments and JJ Kinahan of TD Ameri Ameritrade. Eugene, do you like this market at this level? Simon, I think the market's fairly valued, so I don't really like it at all. I think it's easier to find shorts than longs. But that being said, we're finding an opportunity in computer services. We're finding some opportunity in healthcare and some other opportunities in telecom, all areas that um, are a little bit controversial, a little bit in telecom. You have big dividend yields while you wait for the market to settle itself out a little bit. Uh, specifically Verizon for you, yeah? Yeah, I, I like Verizon quite a bit. I think that you get a 6% dividend yield and you have a, a catalyst coming in that the 3G or CDMA technology is going to be added to the iPhone. It's starting to be reported and we think that's going to be a catalyst for Verizon going forward. JJ, do you like the market? Well, right here in the short term, uh, Simon, I think the S&P future has to trade 1202. You know, we're only 20 points away from that right now. So in the short term, yes, but I think once we get back up there, the, the market's going to capitulate a little bit back down near the 11 half area. And I, I just think we're going to be a bit range bound here for the summer till the market finds a catalyst one way or the other. Joe, let's talk about oil, which, which again, I mean, we've come off our highs, but it's still looking very strong. Yeah, it looks very strong, and it's a fundamental story, Simon. I think the trade right now, you could look at the oil services today. Raymond James upgrading Weatherford. J.P. Morgan on the other side of that, taking it down. My suggestion would be play the OIH. If you're looking to drill down a little further, look at Halliburton. You get much more of it, a little bit of an international exposure. But with oil, let's just be careful because you are going to get some stats coming out tonight and tomorrow morning. Oil right now pulling back under 86 and a half. John, you made a very impassioned plea last night for AK Steel. Worth repeating. I mean, you're, you're absolutely solid on that bet. I am, and I, I like a number of other American steel makers as well. And the reason is, of course, the uh, price of iron ore, the main component that goes into steel, has gone up so dramatically, Simon, that the domestic producers of iron ore and steel, and Cleveland Cliffs is the producer of iron ore uh, that everybody goes to in this country that doesn't already have it, I think that's a wind at our backs here in the U.S., and that hurts most of the Asian steel makers and European car makers, but it is great for U.S. steel. It'll be great for U.S. jobs overall. And this is not yep. trade protectionism. This is just BHP, Bilton, Rio Tinto, and Vale what? increasing their price and doing so on a quarterly rather than annualized basis. Let me pick up specifically on some of those names. JJ, you've got an insight here as to what retail customers have been doing. Yeah, we saw with our retail traders over the last week, you know, one of the names that John didn't mention, uh, we had talked earlier about, BHP, it may affect negatively. BHP is one where we saw a lot of our customers selling over the last week to week and a half, getting out of their long positions and actually even going short in some cases. And Rio Tinto, it's not working out quite as well to a lesser extent. Mm. Let's talk about some of the technology issues. I mean, the headline for much of the morning was that technology was down partly because of CA with its, with its job losses. But you've got some quite big moves on, on Amazon in particular today, Eugene. What are you making on that? Well, that's iPad related. Um, yeah, late yesterday, the app for the um, Kindle came out and um, you have 450,000 <laughs> books um, in, the, in Amazon. And even though some people are concerned that the iPad might supplant um, the Kindle at some point, I, I think you'd rather sell more books than actual, actual Kindles. Anybody else want to come Simon, in on that? I think the reality yeah. with Amazon is that the market last week was playing it from the short side. You had a little bit of a downtrend. That's being unwound today, and that's the reason for the correction John, higher. Yeah. I agree, Simon, uh, with, with Eugene and uh, with Joe. The, the sales of the Kindle are not the big thing, of course. It's bringing people into the bookstore. iPad is going to do that. I believe they will scream past the Kindle. I think that seems to be a consensus that's building. And Amazon, not wanting to get just run over by this trade, is going to profit from it. And that's why you see the money flowing back into Amazon today. Let's get to the chart of the day, guys. An astounding move that we had on Greek bond yields today, as the Greeks seem to suggest that they didn't really want the IMF to come in as part of the package to help them out because they might uh, have medicine that was a little bit too harsh. There you go. Astounding moves. You'll see that we're higher than we were uh, before. Let's bring in Rick Santelli uh, for a view on this from the picks in Chicago. Rick? Hi, Simon. A, a tremendous move, and I'm glad that we have that chart there. So, uh, of course, viewers can see the above 7% January 28th, the above 7% today. And ironically, uh, you know, within a half a basis point of the same high, what's different is 
is that the yield on the Bund, the flight to safety piece of that puzzle, uh, moved down in yield, and it was a little lower in yield than it was in January, hence the difference between the two. Actually, this go-around was wider. And, Simon, you know, you're from, you're, you're from Europe. The real key here from the States, we look at it from afar, are we going to see drachmas again, or do you really think no, that no, no, no. It'll stick to serious? No, that's, that's a red herring. John, did you want to come in on this? Yeah, I agree with Rick. Uh, and people are just being rewarded for uh, uh, putting money to work in a more uh, desperate place in Greece. In other words, the risk premium should be the three points over U.S. 10-year treasuries that it is. I'm sure Rick agrees there, and I'm not surprised to see it having to be around 7%. Rick, Rick let, let, let me draw you, if I may, to now nine minutes away from the result of the three-year auction. What should we watch out for? What are you expecting? Well, I think this is an interesting auction because I always operate from the following premise, that nowadays people, investors, set up for the auction the day of. So the WI trade's been very tight today, 175 to 177. And when you add in what's going on in Greece, even if it's psychological, I think this short maturity is going to go well. I think it'll price somewhere between 175 and 177 yield. Okay, we'll watch it. I'll talk to you then, Rick. Thank you very much for that. Let's move to more of today's trade. JJ, let me pick up, if I may. We mentioned the European banks and central banks. Right. The commercial banks have also seen a bit of action today, no? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we see, uh, well, first of all, European banks, one of the trends we've seen over the last week or so has been in Ireland with the Allied Irish Bank and the Bank of Ireland <laughs> seen a lot of... Uh, uh, call buying going on there as well as stock buying but if we talk about what's going on in the u.s today we see things like and i know john wants to comment on wells fargo and citigroup and some of the american banks have also benefited today with people coming back here on the financials yeah do you want to pick up john and financials have really pulled us back to cut the earlier losses overall yeah and that's somewhat surprising given the uh the tax talk over out of the imf simon but just as joe says we see block trading of options in Wells Fargo, Citigroup, and J.P. Morgan in particular today, those are big options being bought, bought in you, blocks by Eugene, institutions, a bullish sign. Are you a buyer? Uh, uh, I am. I'm, a, I'm an owner of the large banks. I'm not an aggressive buyer. I think you have some chatter about um, large liquidity positions as interest rates increasing, um, the spreads being beneficial near term, but I, I think that the large banks have had a large move, and um, I'm willing to sit and wait here. Joe, would you wait? I think, Simon, you have to look at the regional banks having a tremendous yeah. move today, and it's on the realization that the commercial real estate market is not as bad as we thought. The next shoe to drop, so to speak, it's more like a slipper. I'd also look at the mortgage insurers. They've had a great move over the last week on what Bank of America did and continue the upward momentum. And, and, and John, it has to be said, this, this article in the journal today that maybe rents are going up, certainly in Manhattan, the REITs have had a very good day as well. Oh, yeah. REITs absolutely on fire, Simon. And uh, just like with the... Uh, mortgage insurers there's a lot that the administration has done that has just gone into effect yesterday that affects foreclosures uh, and makes things not vacant for as long on the residential side and i believe that that, that is helping sentiment on the commercial side as well jj do you want to have a last word on that well, it, with what everyone's saying, I agree. And one of the things I would add to that is, you know, everyone seems to be fairly bullish on the financials. And Eugene said right at the beginning, he doesn't necessarily want to buy him here. Well, then think about selling puts down below the money in like a Wells Fargo at a 29 level or something like that if you're afraid of a little bit of a pullback, but you'd still like to go on them. Gentlemen, stay with us if you would. Don't go anywhere. We'll tell you where the big money is flowing in options and equities today. Back in a moment. A street fight of the highest order. Air